Today, we are examining the work energy in the coefficient of restitution of a tennis ball as it is dropped vertically from rest onto a surface. This first diagram shows the tennis ball being released from rest at the start and having a final velocity hitting the ground with a change in height. This final velocity is the initial velocity of the ball's rebound, as seen in the start of the next diagram. The ball then has a final velocity of zero as it reaches its peak before falling again. This continues until the ball has a change in height of zero. To identify the type of problem, we recognize that there is a start and an end position over an unknown period of time. Therefore, the work energy equation should be used. There are no external forces in the system, so it is a conservation of energy equation. Therefore, u and ve equal zero, as well as the initial velocity since the system starts from rest. Then, simplify and solve for v2, the final velocity at release. Next, to figure out the rebound velocity of the tennis ball, use the same conservation of energy equation, but this time we know the final velocity will be zero since the ball is at its peak. Solve again for v2 and you have the rebound velocity of the system. The coefficient of restitution equation is given as the velocity of separation over the velocity of approach. By plugging in the velocities derived from the work energy equation and then simplifying, we end up getting that the coefficient of restitution is the square root of the change in height of the rebound over the change in height of the release. This is an accurate approximation of the coefficient of restitution for any vertically dropped object. For our experiment, we dropped our tennis ball from an initial height of 36 inches. The first rebound height was measured at 23.15 inches, yielding a coefficient of restitution of 0 0.802 from our previous equation. The ball peaked a second time at 14 inches, yielding a coefficient of restitution of 0.778. The third peak was 7.5 inches, yielding a coefficient of restitution of 0.732. The last peak we measured was 3.75 inches, yielding a coefficient of 0 0.707. Given our results, we can expect the variability in a coefficient of restitution due to outside factors such as surface properties and a small amount of rotation on the ball. For example, in the third and fourth peaks, you can see the ball veering to the right, thus lowering the rebound height and E. This graph displays the peak of each bounce over time. As you can see, the change in height decreases with each bounce. The International Tennis Federation has rigorous testing and standards for their tennis balls. The balls are tested in a lab and released from a vacuum tube at the standard height of 100 inches onto a smooth granite surface in a sealed testing chamber at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The rebound height of the ball must be between 53 and 58 inches, yielding a range of E from 0.728 to 0.762.